As a recording engineer, I was at Sony Music for 17 years in New York, and after that I was freelance for a while before I came here to teach. The cello is that side, and the saxophone is on the other side. My job as a recording engineer is basically to make things sound pretty so the producer doesn't get fired. Um, I place the microphones at the recording session, I blend them together, I come up with the balance between the instruments. It's nice to have 12 Grammys on my CV, but it doesn't really affect the way I do my work. Sound recording today generally is so closely linked with video that everything we do we have to be concerned about how it matches with image. Because of the larger size screens, especially in cinemas, the new challenge now is presenting elevation and height in, in sound. So we're going up. That's, that's basically where sound recording is going. This is Studio 22 in the basement of the new music building here at Schulich School. And we are exploring multi-channel surround sound mixing with uh, height channels. So what's different here from your conventional surround sound system is that uh, uh, we start with this one, this horizontal plane in the middle, uh, adding a few more speakers than usual. Normally you'd have three in the front and two in the back, but we have a, a complete ring here. Uh, from there we add an additional ring above for the height, uh, the, the addition of height. A good example of how we incorporate the high channels is if you're mixing sound effects for film and you have a scene in the movie where it's raining, in the past you'd be sitting with rain coming from all around you, which sounds like rain, but now we can have rain coming from above you as well, so it's much more real. You actually feel like you're getting wet in the cinema. Mixing music, we can spread out the elements so that there's less traffic, you know, in, in the front channels. For instance, in stereo, you have to pile up all the instruments together so you lose clarity and it's hard to discern between the guitar or a bass, whereas it, with, with so many channels we can give each element its own space. Right. So this is in the high channels. I put the amp up there and I've kept the actual microphones on the guitar down in the lower, the mid, the mid level. So again, I'm, I'm creating this giant sized guitar by using the high channels. So we're working with NHK in Japan, that's the national broadcaster in Japan. Uh, on this multi-channel system. The NHK standard 22.2 .2 is 22 loudspeakers and two subwoofers, and this is their new standard for audio that goes with their ultra-high vision video standard, which is also being adopted in Europe. This eventually will hit North America, just like HDTV took a, an additional 20 years. It became a standard in Japan and Asia, and then 20 years later was adopted in North America. I, I think this will follow as well. It's just a matter of time. So we're here in the Spatial Audio Lab of Kermit, which is the Center for Interdisciplinary Research in Music, Media and Technology. It's on the eighth floor of the new music building here at McGill University. And uh, what we're testing for is we are seeing how different acoustic treatments affect a sound recording engineer as they go about one of their daily tasks. So this room is very dead except for the floor. The only reflections really coming back to the listener from the sidewalls, which we have set up here on motors. So what we're testing for here is how engineers, how well engineers can work under three different scenarios of acoustic treatment. This is an absorbing material that's full of rock wool insulation covered with fabric. So it's very, it damps the sound down quite uh, extravagantly. And in this iteration, we have what we call specular reflection. So this is uh, about four coats of lacquer on a, on a plywood board. So it's very reflective. This third surface is diffusion, so we, what we get is many reflections coming back to the listener at different times. I'm here with Brett Leonard, uh, one of our PhD candidates, and he's our test subject for the day as we prepare for tomorrow's te real testing. And so he's performing a very simple task, equalization, under different acoustic treatments. During the actual testing, we'll have a screen drop in a wall basically between the listener and the surfaces so that they're really only affected by ear as, as they do their testing. Ultimately what we aim to do is make recommendations to manufacturers for the best setup uh, acoustically for the modern control room. Uh, we're looking at ways for engineers to work more efficiently and productively so that they can finish their product on time and for to meet lower budgets.